So we've looked at two models and the way that economics can be applied to individual firms, markets within an in, and individual industries. Basically microeconomic models and these are microeconomic model strategies. So how does this actually affect the behaviour? What are the ideas that should be used with your behaviour in this? Well, affect your competitive strategy then, you must adopt a number of things. You can decide to act before rivals or learn from the states of rivals. You can be a first reader, you can try and invest money in research and development, for instance. You can try and build up uh, new marketing models. You can try and recruit new staff. You can try and increase your levels of technology, whether that be technology as artifact, process, or knowledge. You can look to deter entry. You can maybe try and make deals with your other competitors so that other people will be less willing to come into your market. You say, look, we have this industry, we've got it carved up between us. Let's not get too busy fighting one another. Let's make sure that we have to keep others out. So as the business, if the industry is growing, if there's a market growth, you say, look, let's, let us compete for new market share. Let's not compete directly with one another. You could attempt to uh, create mobility barriers. You can attempt to make it difficult for t people to catch up with time. Like, so you know that if somebody comes into the market, they will take them a while to build up because you'll know you've, you've developed certain experience levels, you have certain commitments to suppliers. So for instance, you have a contract signed six months, you keep that contract, you keep renewing the contract, so there's always at least six months before it expires, this letter, or a year before it expires. This means anyone new comes to the market, cannot compete with you directly, it's going to take them a year in order for you to actually break, to break the other contractors. There are also things called generic strategies. Generic strategies are the fourth one, there's cost leadership, where you decide that what you're going to do is you're going to spend your time driving your costs down so you can lower your prices, so that other companies may then have to follow you mentioned this a little bit before, certain behaviour towards oligopolies, where sometimes big firms provide cost leadership in the perfect market the competition. There might well be an element of some larger firms actually setting the price. And then if you want to uh, compete with the price, then you have to get your costs down to the, the level of the other firms or below them. Differentiation. You can decide, well, actually, this market is very homogeneous. Let's see if we can find something slightly different. And one of the ways that car dealerships do this, of course, is that modern cars are very similar, so what they often do is offer better warranties, better support services, better financing, etc. Or you can focus heavily on one of those, one of the both, but work bring them all together. You can actually kind of merge them together a little bit so you might actually not take a, a pure level of, of uh, one of the products. So you might decide to cut differentiate but also keep the cost down within that one particular product. One thing that managers often try and claim, this is a quote from Baden Fleur in Stopford, is that actually it's environmental determinism. And the quote often given, often their managers blame everything but themselves for their poor performance. Blame the environment as mature or hostile, they identify excess capacity, unfair competition, adverse exchange rates, absence of demand, and a host of factors to blame why they are doing badly. This, of course, is actually simply looking at analysis and using analysis as an excuse to hide behind. It is not using economic analysis for the purpose of trying to teach you, which is actually trying to learn what the market is like, what the industry is like, and basing your decisions upon that. If you simply analyse the market and say, it's impossible to operate in here, then what you're clearly saying is that it's time to exit. But of course, if you cannot exit because of high fixed costs, like I said, I've worked in an industry like that when I worked in heavy engineering with Siemens, where we held a quite a big market share, but it was almost impossible to make a profit because the market was oversupplied, and no one could afford to get out because they owned very very we building gas turbines are very very expensive machinery to do so right. so in this situation managers are not doing themselves any favors or anyone else any favors and let's look at the idea of the strategic models how can we criticize them and the, a little bit of this will also apply in the next lecture we'll start to look at uh, strategies of court of the corporations how they might the strategies above the level of the, the strategic business unit we're looking at today Firstly, these models are often considered far too simplistic, and they're often developed in one area and then artificially applied. In the seminars, we saw this would attempt to apply Porter's Five Forces to a non-profit organisation. Models are expensive to develop, often they provide a lot of investment, and as such, you look at them as a technology which you spent a lot of money, and so they are technology in a very real sense, and yet people are trying to make as much money and make use of these models as possible. So it's about you, if you spent a lot of money using a machine, you may well tend to use that machine in your business as often as possible to manufacture as much as possible, even if it's not really the most efficient way of doing it. Models are very much the same. 
as the number of models has grown over time each model makes less money and it still costs a lot of money to develop it still costs a lot of money to break to use so the rate of return for each one falls because sources often apply them inappropriately like I said apply them across widening areas in order to maintain their profits they become less effective as we try to look at problems as typical rather than real problems of the classic of this in the heavy engineering sector I work was a tendency to look at what did GEC do as GEC have been seen as the GEC USA not GEC Britain and been seen as a leader in the development of process in this area but of course if you didn't have GEC's problems it's using GEC solutions was going to cause you further problems and so we end up with solutions that have been brought together by expensive management consultants looking for a chargeable problem and one of the phrases that's worth remembering at this point is that all models are in some essentials wrong but some of the models are very useful if they help you to think that is the purpose of a model if it helps you to think if it widens your thinking then it's useful if it doesn't widen your thinking if it becomes a prison and this is often the way models are used then it is simply wrong and it is not useful the so summary then competitive level strategy so industrial organization models which is a branch of microeconomics so it's based in standard neoclassical logic and it looks at the, what is a sustainable advantage and suggests that in reality the only really sustainable advantage is mobility barriers because it has no idea of agency of individual strategists has no idea of firms being homogeneous it needs to look at the, all the films that are actually heterogeneous Cor it is corporate level which is the one we'll be looking at next week we'll be looking at two of the areas that we're looking forward to the growth share matrix of portfolio management and the core comes to the corporation these we'll be looking at in the next lecture thank you